Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at an effect called Translational Lift. Uh, a little while ago on my community page, uh, people were saying, hey, could we get some more helicopter content? I said, oh, helicopters, oh, I just so happened to be dabbled just a bit. Now, I'm really not that great of a helicopter pilot, but I do know a little bit about actually flying them. So we're going to be looking at something called Translational Lift today. Now, Translational Lift is an interesting concept. Uh, if you want to think about it sort of another way, it's the moment when the helicopter's rotor, as it's interacting with the ground underneath it, starts to create this like little cushion. It's almost like a ground effect cushion once you hit a certain forward speed. Now, the interesting thing about that Translational Lift is if we're under the speed where the Translational Lift kicks in, we actually have a severe decrease in lift and vice versa. Uh, that means for us uh, sitting here in our nice, comfortable little helicopter, if we start getting slow, the amount of torque or the amount of lift that we have to make the rotor now generate by applying more collective is going to increase substantially. Now, one of the things you probably noticed there is as I brought myself into this uh, not world's greatest hover here is how I'm having to continually increase the uh, power there. You can actually look over in the left of about 75%. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip the helicopter forward here. And I want you to observe that as the helicopter starts to pick up speed, notice it starts climbing at the same time, especially as it starts to translate out of the yellow region of the actual speed indicator that you have here. So much so that I'm actually maintaining the same altitude I was a minute ago with 13% less torque required from our actual engine itself on the power. Now, the reason this effect is so distinctive is if you were taking off or landing this helicopter, that's going to have a massive impact on what you're going to need to do in order to safely get it down on the ground. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come bring myself around here. There's a nice little uh, grass field. I was like grass fields for helicopter work. It's just one of those things where, if, you know, you're going to be practicing hovering. You're going to be covering a lot of ground. So you definitely don't want to be doing that at a major airport. And we're just going to come swinging over the lines. Now notice, because I've got so much forward speed here, that my actual required collective, my power is at 36%, and we're having no difficulty maintaining positive control of this helicopter here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring us down to the ground here. Right? We're going to do this with a little bit of forward speed. Again, that forward speed is going to make it so that you don't have to do massive collective adjustments all the time. Now notice, as I start to get slow here, I have to start adding more and more collective in as we start to lose that translational lift. Now, when I start getting in the last couple feet here, ah, oh, it's a lot of right foot there. I'm against the wind here. You can see that I'm almost at 75% power, even though I've got rotor and ground effect now that's now holding me in this particular position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ease ourselves down onto the ground here. Oh, I've got to love that rotor and ground effect, by the way. They do such a nice job of that. Whoop. Whoa. <laughs> Make sure your feet positions are even on the floor with your rudder pedals, people especially me here. So I'm sitting here, I'll go ahead and I'll bring the power down. So let's demonstrate that translational lift in another way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna change my view down here <laughs> so you can see my little stick so that you can see just how effective this actual motion is. Now look at my airspeed, which is gonna be this guy right here, and then go ahead and take a look at my stick position as well as uh, the power required here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and ease up on the collective here. You're gonna see my power requirement's gonna go up. We're gonna get a nice little twisty there. And I'm going to go ahead. And, oh, my God, I hate the seating position. I literally, I don't know if I could fly from the seat. This is so weird. All right, let's get ourselves in the air. Man, that feels weird. Okay, so we're about 74% power right now. And you can see we're playing just a teeny tiny little corrections to deal with the gusts today. So what I'm going to do is I'm not going to touch my collective. So look at my power right now. See, it's about 70%. And I'm just going to tip the helicopter forward. And all I'm going to do is not touch the collective. All I'm doing is tipping the helicopter forward. Now notice the helicopter suddenly shoots upwards. So I did not change the collective angle at any point. And if you actually look over at my stick on the right, you'll notice all I did was to stick the stick forward and my power has actually come down as we started to hit that translational lift. Now, why is that translational lift important to us? As I was mentioning during our takeoff and landing, that's going to be a critical component of making it easy for us to do. The other critical thing is a lot of people, when they think of helicopters, they think of a vertical takeoffs. A vertical takeoff in a helicopter is actually pretty dangerous because without that little bit of boost, if I were to have a sudden engine out, we would drop as if they cut the cables that were help supporting the helicopter. Now, that's a really, really nasty place to be in. But when you get that translational lift, that provides you with that extra little bit of cushion of safety that you can then utilize for the purposes of getting your helicopter into a safe point. 
Now, the reason that translational lift gets really, really interesting, by the way, is that I have a good amount of airspeed. If I were just to lift up the nose like this without changing my collective, you'll notice that we just basically kit ourselves into a hover. But now, see how that speed's starting to bleed off or entering into the yellow part of the airspeed? Now, watch my power change as I have to start cranking that collective in in order to keep us steady. Ugh! Wow, we went from 35 all the way up to almost 75% power there as we had to lose that extra little bit of lift here. Now, let me go ahead and put a little rough demonstration here together. Oh my gosh, I should be landing to the right here. I shouldn't be landing this way. I'm dealing with a bit of a crosswind here. One of these days, I'm going to get me a collective. Oh, <laughs> ouch. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a vertical takeoff with this helicopter, and I'm going to simulate an engine out so you can see what will happen here. So I'm going to go ahead and apply some uh, good old flashing collective here. We're going to get a little light on the skids. I'm going to start rising up, rising up, rising up, just like that. Again, we're doing a vertical takeoff. Notice I'm almost at maximum power here. And inch and out. Oh, no chance. So let's go ahead and do that again by doing the rolling takeoff. All right, this time we're going to be doing the uh, regular takeoff here. So again, we're going to go ahead and apply some collective. You can watch my power start to climb up there. Go ahead, a little bit of right foot. And we're just going to tip. We're just tipping, we're tipping, and engine out. Whoa, wow, I've actually go, whoa! <laughs> Wasn't now quick enough on that one, but you notice that it was able to keep a little bit more control of the helicopter as it started to slip. So as you can see, there's a lot of little things that make these helicopters very challenging. And as you start moving into other places, like landing on really, really sketchy little pylons, this gets even more stressful. But that's for another video. Enjoy.